Hello, fellow birders. My name is Dennis Kania. Today we'll be discussing a group of shorebirds, small shorebirds, that are commonly referred to as the peeps. On the DuPage Birding Club Education Channel, we'll be discussing all things bird related. And as I mentioned, today we'll be focusing on the peeps that migrate through DuPage County. So here are our peeps. You can disregard the bright yellow one. You're not gonna see that one out on the mudflats. However, all of these others could potentially show up in DuPage County. And you can see they're all quite similar. We have white rump sandpiper here, beard sandpiper, lee sandpiper, semi-palmated, and western. And so all of these shorebirds are small and you can see they have a lot in common. They have very short legs, short bills on all of these. And the plumage is very, very similar looking. And our focus today is going to be on these shorebirds migrating back in the fall. And you'll have a couple of different plumages that you could see them in at that time. The adults are gonna be rather drab looking as they are in worn plumage and constantly changing plumage at that point in time. And the juvenile birds that'll be migrating down following them uh, will have more crisp looking plumage. So you, you could age these birds, but we're not gonna really focus on plumage a lot today. I know in a lot of my previous tutorials, I really focus a lot on uh, understanding the feather tracks and understanding how those come together to make field marks on the birds. We're not gonna be looking at that very closely today. We're gonna be changing our approach a little bit with these birds and we'll be looking at structure and um, the bare parts of the bird, the bill and the legs. So that's where our focus will be today. There are several places within DuPage County that we can find shorebirds if conditions are right. And one of those being Fermilab, which is my favorite place to do um, shore birding. And on the eastern end of the site, there are several small lakes that can be great for shorebirds if we're in the midst of a drought season. And in those conditions, we, we end up getting very vast mudflats out there that can have really a lot of shorebirds. Uh, some of the other places that you can look in the county would be the 83rd Street Floodle, which is on Route 53 and it's a part of the Green Valley uh, Forest Preserve property. So that can be very, very um, productive viewing that area. Hidden Lake Forest Preserve also has some mudflats that develop on the uh, east branch of the DuPage River. So that's a site that I sometimes visit. And the Wooddale Reservoir, Reservoir up in uh, Addison is also um, a place where we can find some shore burning. So here are some graphs that show the availability of the shorebirds that we're gonna be talking about. And this again comes from Fermilab and the 33 years of survey history that we have accumulated. So again, we have all five of our peeps. We have the Bairds, the least white rumped, semi-palmated and Western all represented here. You can see that there's a kind of an interesting migration pattern going on here with Baird Sandpiper. The vast majority of our records are coming from the fall migration. And you can see those are typically found in August and September. There are very few records that come from the spring migration. And that's just because the, uh, the route that the Bairds is taking in the spring is quite different than what it utilizes in the fall for migration. Least Sandpiper you can see shows up uh, right with the beginning of May and is seen all through May in migration. And before you know it, uh, before even June is over, we can already start to see least Sandpipers uh, returning on migration. And we'll see them and have them around uh, all through July, August, and well into September and sometimes even into October. So we have a very large window of opportunity for finding least Sandpipers. White rum sandpiper is just the opposite of bears. We get the vast majority of our records uh, and more consistently find them in, in the spring migration. So all the, uh, these records in May indicate that. You can see they're much more sporadic in the fall migration. They're spread out and uh, we just don't have consistent um, findings, at least at Fermilab for, for, semi, for white rum sandpiper. Semi-palmated is very much like the uh, leaf sandpiper and we're getting them um, in late April and all through the month of May, even a little bit into June. And before you know it, those birds are returning once again, uh, coming in slightly later than the least sandpiper in the fall migration. But here's our, here's our line of demarcation here. So just about, just after the 4th of July, we should start seeing semi-palmated sandpipers. And they're with us through the rest of July, August, 
September and then somewhat into October. Western sandpiper, we have very few records at uh, Fermilab for this species and none of them are very current. You can see that the last couple um, survey periods have no records of Western sandpiper. So they, they came in some of the earlier uh, survey periods. And those records are basically in the fall migration. Um, throughout the county, you're not going to have a lot of Western sandpiper records, but you should be aware of the fact that they can come through. So uh, we include them in this discussion. So the first thing that I would like to do, since um, shorebirding can be tough, and uh, the whole intent of this is so that you know any birder can go out to the mud flats and come away feeling fairly confident that they're identifying these shorebirds properly. So we're going to give you some basics as a foundation that you can utilize to do that. And the first step that you want to take when you're going out shore birding is to calibrate for size. And so what you can hope for is that you have some bird that you're familiar with that's out there in the mud flats sharing that, that space with other shorebirds that uh, you're now going to try and identify. And one of the e more easily recognized birds out there might be the lesser yellow legs. So I've given you an image here that shows lesser yellow legs in comparison to Lee Sandpiper. You can see the size difference is quite dramatic. Another bird that you're probably familiar with would be Kildare and um, so you can use that for establishing your base on size as well. But I do have a couple other examples here. Here we have a pectoral sandpiper, which um, really, well, for all practical purposes, if there were no other shorebirds out there, you would, you would be puzzled a bit as far as, am I looking at a leaf sandpiper or a pectoral sandpiper? Uh, leg color is the same, bill structure is pretty much the same. This is a larger bird. You can see that the uh, wings do extend out beyond the tail on this individual. And you can see it's just a larger bodied bird. Um, it has more of a neck than the uh, leaf sandpiper would have. And as I mentioned, the structure of the bill is, is pretty much the same, but it is certainly a heavier bill. And the base of the bill will show some color that you won't get in leaf sandpiper. And with close examination, you would see that these are, are certainly longer legs than, uh, than what we would have on that leaf sandpiper. Here's one more calibration image, and this one actually shows some of our, a mixture of our peeps. So we do have, in this image, we have three leaf sandpipers. There's one here, here, and here. And then the fourth bird is a bared sandpiper here. So you begin to see that uh, the bears are slightly larger than the, uh, than the least and semi-palmateds. Uh, but still looking very, very similar. So we can break down those peeps into two groups, um, two of them being longer winged than the other three. And so the, the long winged ones would be the white rump sandpiper and the bared sandpiper. And in both cases here, you can see that the wings do extend beyond the tail. Here's the tail and here are our wings. Tail and here are our wings. So both of these do have longer wings than what we would see on least semi-palmated or western. All of those species, the wings only go as far out as the tail. So both of these birds have dark legs. Uh, these look a little bit more grayish. They're, they've got a little more light on them, but they certainly are not yellowish or greenish. They're definitely dark, dark colored legs. So to separate these two based on leg color, we have nothing to stand on. But if we look at the bill shape, we can see that there's a difference. Um, both these birds are somewhat heavy at the base with the bill. Um, this bird does, bird's bill does taper down and it does have a slight droop at the end of it. If we look at the bared sandpiper, again, heavy at the base, a um, little straighter bill, we don't have that droop and it comes to a finer point than we see on the white rump sandpiper. Now this can be very difficult to see, so you're gonna need a really good look at these birds and able to make that dif differentiation. Another thing that we can take a peek at is the, um, the structure of the bird and the profile. And so on a white rump sandpiper, the slope of the forehead is a little more uh, gradual than it is on a bared sandpiper. So we end up with more of a steep forehead on the, uh, on the bared sandpiper. So that's something that we can look for. One other, other thing that we can, uh, we can talk about here, and we are going to get a little bit into plumage in this case, and that's that um, a white rump sandpiper, if it is retaining any of its breeding plumage, will have these little flecks that run down the flank, and you can see that represented here. Another um, 
plumage clue would be the fact that if you're lucky enough to actually get to see that, it does have a white rump. And you can get that in flight, or you could see that on a bird that's standing and decides to flex its wings. But if you do see white here in this area, do make sure that the white goes all the way across. It's not split by um, black or a dark color. So you definitely want to make sure the white is all the way across. Uh, one last thing on structure that I didn't mention is that um, white rump sandpipers are going to look more full-bodied than um, bears. And you can see that the line uh, on the underside here has kind of, a, it kind of bulges out here towards the vent. So it's not a straight line, where this is more of a straight line on this bird here. So that's something that you can also watch out for. So here are other two more of our peeps. Uh, these are the ones that are quite likely to be seen in migration. And that's the least sandpiper here and semi-palmated sandpiper here. And right off the bat, you can see this bird has yellowish legs. And this one has dark legs, just like what we saw on our white rumped and our bears. So out of the five, this is the only one that's gonna have the pale legs. And we have to be very careful. Uh, depending on the lighting situation, these legs could look dark. At high noon, when there is shade uh, covering all of these legs from the body, they tend to look darker. Also, they can look dirty from the mud flats. So if they have dirt on them, they're also not gonna look very light. So you have to look very closely in order to get that uh, yellowish color so it's not a, an easy thing to see, but if you do get that, that certainly gives you a lead or a leg up on what, uh, what species you're looking at. So the next thing I would like to look at structurally is the bill. In this case here on the leaf sandpiper, you can see it's heavy at the base. And it does taper down to a fine point and it does have a slight droop to it. The semi-palmated sandpiper is gonna start out with a heavy base and then it doesn't taper down very much at all. And it's a straight bill. The short straight bill looks more like a little cigar, in fact. Structurally, um, the semi-palmated sandpiper is again kind of full-bodied looking and it has that same kind of curvature to the under parts that we saw on the white rumped. And so at the vent area, you kind of start to angle up like that. Uh, Lee sandpiper is gonna have more of a line like what we were seeing on the uh, Baird sandpiper. It's more of a straight line going across like this. When I do see these birds in fall migration, and these individual pictures here do reflect this, uh, semi-palmated sandpipers at a glance always tend to look a little grayer looking than uh, least sandpipers. Least sandpipers are gonna look a little more brownish. So uh, as I mentioned early on, you know, we're not gonna count on plumage very much, but you know, if there's an opportunity and there's something that uh, is easily picked up, on, and this is one of those kind of situations, then you know, go ahead and utilize that. So a little more brownish here in leaf sandpipers and more grayish typically on semi-palmated sandpipers. So here's the less likely of the short peeps. I didn't mention the, uh, the wing length on those last two, but I, I, early on I did. Um, but certainly wings are not extending beyond the tail and that's true for all three of these little peeps, the least and semi-palmated, which we just talked about, and now the western as well. So western is a candidate again with dark legs, but its bill is quite different than what we were just seeing on semi-palmated. It starts out heavy at the base, it does taper down, maybe not quite as much as the least sandpiper, but it certainly is longer and it does have more of a droop um, than either of those two previous species. And if we take a look here at this example, we have a semi-palmated sandpiper here in the foreground, and then we have um, the western sandpiper here in the background. You can see definitely that that's a longer bill. You can see they're both wide at the base. This one is tapering down. It has a slight droop to it. This is very straight compared to that. As we mentioned uh, plumage-wise with the white rump sandpiper, we talked about some little markings that run down the flank. And this individual is not showing that, but Western sandpipers, if they are retaining some of their breeding plumage, they can have these little flecks running down along the flanks, just like we saw on that uh, white rump sandpiper. So if you get a short-legged, short-winged, um, longer build peep, and you see those little markings running along the flank here, you have found yourself a western sandpiper quite likely. So um, again, there aren't a lot of records for this species in the county, but they do, they do pop up. 
some of the records that do pop up might be misidentifications. And I threw Dunlin in here because it does have some of the features of this bird. Overall, if we're looking at this bird in, in the late, late in the year and we're seeing it's much grayer and less um, markings within all of these scapulars and coverts. Uh, so offhand, you'd say it doesn't look anything at all like Western Sandpiper. But we can see these birds a little earlier uh, when they're not all gray like this. And so then you're going to see some plumage that looks similar. And certainly structurally, it looks similar uh, with the bill, uh, heavy at the base, long bill, and drooping. The drooping is more extensive than what we have on Western Sandpiper. And if you take a good look at the overall structure of the bird, you'll recognize the fact that these are much longer legs than what we have on, on Western Sandpiper. But do keep in mind that the, that that error has been made in the field in the past. So you don't want to make that same mistake. So here are some key features to keep in mind when you're looking at the peeps. Structurally, Baird's and white rump sandpipers are very, very similar. They are the two that have the wings that extend beyond the tail. So that at least eliminates three of our other peeps right off the bat. And in order to separate them, we're gonna to have to take a very, very close look at the structure of the, the head, the forehead, how it meets the bill. And the bill itself, um, in both cases, that they're heavy at the base and they both taper down, but Baird's is coming to a much finer point and it's a straighter bill than what we have on white rumped, which uh, does have a slight droop at the tip. As I mentioned earlier, the sandpiper is the only one of our small peeps that has yellowish legs, so that can set it apart right away. But even if you don't see the yellowish legs, we should be able to separate it based on that bill structure. It does start out wide at the base, but does taper down quite a bit and does have a slight droop. Um, if we we're comparing that to semi-palmated sandpiper, we would see that that uh, bill is starting out heavy at the base, ends heavy, not quite as heavy at the tip, but it still doesn't taper down anywhere near as much as what we saw in least sandpiper, and it's a straight bill. Western sandpiper looks a bit like a least sandpiper bill, except that it's much longer and the droop is heavier. It starts out heavy at the base, does taper down, but does have that heavier droop. And both of these birds, semi-palmated and western sandpipers, do have those black legs. And remember to always keep Dunlin in the back of your mind, especially if all of a sudden you're excited and thinking that you perhaps have found a western sandpiper. Make sure you look closely and do eliminate that species, Dunlin, as a, uh, as a contender. So thanks for taking the time to view this video. Hopefully we've given you some bird food for thought. And I hope you'll join us again in the future as we explore all things bird related.